In this set of notes, we're gonna focus on the cell cycle and specifically mitosis within the cell cycle. So let's go over the outline for these notes. We're gonna start with an introduction and overview of the cell cycle and then go into the different phases, starting with interphase and going through the three steps, G1, S, and G2. Then mitosis with its four phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And then we'll finish off going over what is cytokinesis. For these notes today, you can pause at each slide and fill in the guided notes that are found in the description below, or you can watch them straight through. So let's get started. So living things are made of cells. This is part of the cell theory. So on this post-it note here, I have the three tenets of the cell theory. All living things are made up of at least one or more cells, and cells are the basic unit of life. Today we're gonna to focus on the third part of the cell theory. All cells come from pre-existing cells. So in order for organisms to grow, repair damage, and even reproduce, we need new cells. And these cells need to come from previous cells, according to the cell theory. So this process is done through what we call cell division. So you can see I have a little diagram here cells dividing over and over again. So we need to better understand this process. So in cell division, we go through what's called the cell cycle. This is the series of steps that happen before and during cellular division. And these stages are important to making sure that the cells have the correct information and the correct structure for the living organism that they are a part of. So here on this slide, I have sort of a simplified view of the cell cycle with the stages broken down. And we're gonna go a little bit more into each stage. So on that simple diagram, I've highlighted about three fourths of it in white here are part of what we call interphase. So you'll see that we have G1, S, and G2 all within this section here called interphase. This is the longest stage of the cell cycle. You can see from the percentage it takes up of the circle. That has the three steps here that I mentioned, the G1, S, and G2. Its basic function is to grow and prepare the cell for its division. This takes time and this needs to be done correctly before we can actually go and start dividing cells. Now before I go into the steps of interphase, I just want to point out here this arrow that says G0. So this is not a part of the stages of cell division. These are for cells that no longer need to divide. If we don't make more of those cells, they go into a state called G0. So for example, our nerve cells. Once we've uh, reached a certain age and developed our nervous system, those cells don't keep dividing. That's why if you get nerve damage, it's permanent because those cells were not producing more. It's in G0. But we're now gonna focus on the cells that are dividing and making new cells and go through their stages. So interphase is the longest part of the cell cycle. So let's talk about what's going on during interphase. The first step is G1, the G1 phase. In this phase, the cell is growing. All of the organelles are going to duplicate. So you can see here, if I have two mitochondria, now I have four. We're gonna be doubling the amount of organelles because we're gonna be splitting the cell into two. So we need two of all of the cell parts. Certain proteins, RNA, and any other molecules that may be necessary are going to be synthesized and produced. So we know that cells are the basic unit of life. So they have all the organelles, our vitamins, our proteins, 
and they have RNA in order to help us make these proteins, and there's going to be various other molecules. We need to make sure that those things that are necessary for the cells functioning are produced. At the end of the G1 phase, we're going to have a checkpoint. That's why I have a little check mark at the bottom here. This is where we make sure that the cell grew properly, everything's where it needs to be, before we can enter into the next phase. So these are important, these checkpoints. We want our cells to be correct and have the right information. So this is to make sure our proofreading process is happening during the cell cycle. After we've passed this checkpoint, we go into the S phase. So the S stands for synthesis. We are synthesizing DNA. So DNA is going to be replicated. DNA is the blueprint. It has all of the information. It's going to tell the cell what proteins it needs to have, uh, what's its role. It's, it's vital to the cell existing. So we want the DNA to be copied exactly as we had it in the original cell. So this will make sure that the genes in the new cells that are produced are identical to each other. When we are going through cellular division, DNA is going to fold up into something called chromosomes. It's gonna be very tightly packed. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in some later slides. But it's important to remember that these chromosomes we usually see in these X shapes it's important to remember that in this S phase, we've doubled it. So all the DNA you need for one cell looks like this. Once it's doubled, now you have sort of this X shape happening and a lot of the cartoon imagery that you'll see for cell division. So after we've replicated that DNA in the S phase, we're gonna go into our final phase of interphase. I use the word phase a lot. There's a lot of phases. So we're gonna go into G2 phase. <laughs> the G2 phase, the cell is going to continue its growth and any other molecules or remaining proteins or substances that need to be synthesized will be synthesized. We're not gonna duplicate the organelles anymore at this point. That only happens in G1. This is sort of the final stages of growth, anything else that needs to be made. The most important part is this final checkpoint. So just like at the end of G1, we need this proofreading step, make sure everything was done correctly. This one is very important because now we have a copy of the DNA. So at this checkpoint, we're making sure that the DNA was copied correctly. We don't have any uh, mutations or errors, and we're making sure that the cell is ready for division. So if it passes this checkpoint, we are then going to be able to leave interphase and go into that remaining part of the cell cycle called M phase. So we're gonna go over what M phase is. So in today's notes, the M phase is going to be mitosis. So mitosis is defined as a process in which the cell's nucleus and nuclear material divide. Nuclear material being the DNA uh, packaged in chromosomes or the DNA itself inside of the nucleus. The reason we're focusing on mitosis is because we're focusing on body cells or the science word soma or somatic cells. So we have other cells, and I will make another video about what their M phase is, but today we're gonna talk about body cells, somatic cells, and after interphase, they're gonna go through the process of mitosis. So interphase has three distinct steps, G1, S, and G2. Mitosis has four, and it's important to recognize what is happening with the DNA at each stage and what's happening at, in the cell through these stages to understand mitosis. So the first stage of mitosis is prophase. During prophase, the nuclear membrane of our nucleus, that outer layer, is actually going to disintegrate and fall apart. 
our nucleolus, that dark center of the nucleus, will disappear. So if you're looking at it under a microscope, you're going to see basically the nucleus falling apart. Now, chromosomes, as I said earlier, are going to be sort of these X-looking like structures we have. Chromosomes are the DNA being packaged very tightly around proteins and folded up. And this is important because DNA is basically this very, very long thread and it needs to fit inside of a microscopic nucleus inside of a microscopic cell. So DNA is folded up very, very tightly called supercoiling and it's going to condense it and make it uh, tight enough to fit within the nucleus. That's chromatin. Once we enter prophase, we're going to condense it even further because we're losing our home for the DNA. The nucleus is gone. You can see here there's no nucleus. So the DNA is going to pack super, super tightly from chromatin into these chromosomes, these X-like structures. And the chromosomes are no longer in the nucleus. They will be sort of in the middle of the cell here. We're also going to see something called spindle fibers start to form on the sides here. In animal cells, there's going to be a organelle called centrioles, and the spindle fibers will be attaching to those. In plant cells, they will be attaching to the cell wall, but these are the key things happening in prophase. We're losing our nucleus. The DNA isn't going to be just sort of a condensed blob, we're actually going to form these condensed individual chromosomes. The next stage is called metaphase. So those spindle fibers we talked about are going to actually attach to those chromosomes. The chromosomes have the center here called centromere, and that's where the spindle fibers can attach to it. When they attach to it, they're going to line up the chromosomes through the equator or the center of the cell. This is students' favorite to remember because it's pretty straightforward. Meta phase, meta middle, and you can find the chromosomes in a straight line across the center of the cell. Even in a microscope looking at the cell, it's pretty clear we can see a fairly straight line down the center. After metaphase, we're going to enter anaphase. The spindle fibers will actually shorten here, and by shortening, they're going to pull those chromosomes from the center to the opposite ends or poles of the cell. So it looks like we're splitting that chromosome in half, but remember, in interphase, we doubled that DNA. So this is a full set, and this is a full set being pulled to either end of the cell. So for anaphase, you can think of away. We're pulling away from each other or apart. You're splitting them apart. Anaphase, we're going to be pulling these chromosomes to the opposite ends of the cell. So the final step of mitosis is telophase. So in telophase, we're actually gonna see the nuclear envelope start to reform, that outer layer of the nucleus. The chromosomes have officially reached the poles and therefore they're gonna decondense and become chromatin again. So in this cartoon here, it's, it's not clear. We don't see that those have um, decondensed, but if you looked under a microscope, you wouldn't be able to see these distinct dark blobs anymore. They would start to loosen up and the whole nucleus would start to fill with that chromatin. We're going to start to see a cleavage furrow form, which is that sort of pinching in an indent. So you'll notice here that the cell hasn't actually split yet. That's because mitosis is the separation of the nucleus and the nuclear material. So we went from one nucleus to two nuclei, but we haven't officially gotten into two cells yet. And that's because there is one final stage of the entire cell cycle. So interphase took up the first 75%. That M phase 
is like 24.5%. And that last, last 0.5 is going to be that final, final stage. And we're gonna call that cytokinesis. So cyto means cell and kinesis means to move. So this is where the cells are splitting and moving away from each other. And it is the final step of the cell cycle. This is where the cytoplasm, so the actual cell goo, is going to divide into two identical cells. We duplicated all of our organelles. We uh, replicated the DNA. And so the cells should be identical to each other, and they should be identical to the cell, the parent cell that we started with. So in animal cells, we only have this cell membrane. So cells are sort of squishy. So they can actually pinch apart. That cleavage furrow will pinch in and pull away, and you have done cytokinesis. Plant cells have a cell wall, so they're not able to just sort of pinch and move away from each other. So they're gonna construct the beginning of a cell wall, and we call that a cell plate. The cell plate will thicken into a cell wall, and since there you have also split up the cytoplasm, that is cytokinesis. And those are all the stages of the cell cycle for a somatic body cell that goes through mitosis. Through the cell cycle and mitosis specifically, living organisms can grow and repair because we're getting identical cells. The cells that you make for your body are your cells. You don't want them to look different and have different genetics. You want them to have your DNA and your information. When you get an injury, you're going to have your cells go through this process and make identical skin cells to replace the ones you lost. When you're growing, you're going to make identical cells to get new bones, new, more skin, to grow and age. And so this is why mitosis is so essential. And it's important to understand it, to understand the processes of living organisms, how they are growing and repairing any damage that might come their way. So I hope this helped you better understand uh, cell cycles and mitosis. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, or if you would like me to go into anything further, just let me know and I would love to help. Thank you.